I've traveled to Sandy Valley on this crazy windy desert day to visit a tiny house which is packed full of very unique design features. I am really looking forward to seeing this one. Hey Rob. Hey. Pleasure to meet you. You too. This tiny house is completely unique, isn't it? <laughs> it's a bit different, yes. This is actually the first one that I've ever seen with the rooftop balcony. I wanted to make it a little bit different. I've seen them on other uh, tiny homes, but I wanted to make it a little bit more friendly, a little bit more accessible. So therefore the stairs going up the side. I reckon first of all, I have to take a look upstairs. Can we go? Yeah, absolutely, all right. yes, after you. And look at the view that you've got here as well. Yeah, it's amazing just because the mesquite trees are only about 15 feet high. And just getting up above the mesquite trees, you can see the whole valley all the way across all the mountains. So just having that little bit of elevation makes a big difference here. And what a spectacular place just to have a seat, relax. Yeah. And you can watch the entire world go by from yeah. up here, can't you? It was really my wife that inspired it. She wanted some place to sit and have a glass of wine and look at the stars at night. Well, I think this is a really amazing feature. I'm excited to see what you've done with the rest of the place. Great, let's go. All right. Come on in. This home is completely charming. That was our intention when we came to the ranch. We wanted to uh, have a little bit of a cowboy western cabin type feel to it. So that was our, what we were shooting for. So there's a lot of woodwork, a lot of, uh, you know, expose the beams, uh, stained glass on uh, the windows, and, you know, it helps to lend to that type of atmosphere. And what was it that initially actually inspired you to do this project? The opportunity became available to have it on the property here and utilize the ranch and the riding and the rodeos and everything for accommodations. And it allows me to escape here as well. So I rent it out as well as utilize it myself. But the inspiration for the design just really came from a uh, desire to want to do a lot of woodwork, you know? I like the grain, I like the feel of it, I like the smell of it when I come inside. You've obviously got a bit of skill doing that as well because this doesn't look to me like a DIY project. <laughs> I, I do have a little bit of skill. My background is in woodworking so I was quite comfortable with that. Building it on the trailer it really wasn't that difficult but I wanted to make sure I did it properly so I did a little bit of research for that as well. So right now we are standing in the living room. Yes it's a uh, pretty typical uh, tiny house bench storage underneath. Great. And um, so we have uh, extra storage there. I wanted to make it a little bit of an L to capitalize on uh, space, you know, so for sitting. But it also uh, comes out. We have the, the bed that comes out like this, and then the cushions just fit on the side. So how many people does this tiny house sleep? Uh, three people, but we've had uh, small families in here with kids and they just, you know, utilize the space as much as they can. Really comfortable looking dining area as well. And the woodwork on this table is beautiful. Is this another custom piece? Yes, uh, that's right off the shelf uh, timbers. It's uh, redwood and redwood being so close to California, redwood was a little bit more uh, plentiful than uh, other types of wood in the lumber store. So we capitalized on redwood because it is a hardy wood and it's uh, durable. One of the things that I cannot get enough of here is the spectacular views and I cannot think of a nicer place to sit and eat breakfast looking out over that gorgeous and vast desert landscape. Yeah, never get tired of it and it always changes. The kitchen is a really lovely size. This trailer, I uh, got it so it was the maximum you could do. So it goes right out to the wheel wells. So that little bit of extra space makes a big difference. I was really surprised how much difference it made when it came to building and adding that little bit of a space. That's so true because when you're dealing in spaces this small, even a few inches can actually make all the difference to how a space feels and functions. Exactly, yeah. And I really like how you've decorated this kitchen. It's got some really unique pops of color with the ceramics the sink, the tiles, and every single one of these light fittings or power plugs has this wonderful ceramic work. When we were in Mexico, they just screamed out to us and I had to incorporate them somehow. I wanted the color in here. And it is a Southwest 
uh, we're in right here. So capitalizing on the color, the Mexican color and the tile and everything just seemed like it was a perfect fit. Very, very <laughs> unique tactic you've done there as well. Yeah, it's, uh, it's rustic and that lends to the cabin. And behind us as well, we've also got the two burner induction hob. Yeah, that um, is a little bit more efficient and uh, cleaner for what we wanted. This is the one thing that uh, uh, probably isn't rustic. <laughs> and this house definitely follows the very traditional tiny house layout of having the kitchen and the bathroom next to it. Yeah, it's uh, important, like in all tiny homes, or architecture for that matter, to utilize the plumbing in one area as much as you can. So I have the utility box in the front. So from that utility box it comes to the the kitchen and the bathroom right here and i really like as well the way that you've done the design of this shower that is really cool how you've got the corrugate and then the stones at the bottom as well yeah that's an improvement that i worked on as well i wanted a little bit more space in the shower and i wanted a solid ground on there as well. I didn't want a tub or, you know, a small little space where you couldn't really, you know, scrub yourself. It's important to have a good shower in the morning. The toilet here, this is an RV toilet? Yeah, fortunately, we're on a piece of property that has a septic system, so we were able to plug right into that. And upstairs is the sleeping loft. Yep. Can we yep. have a look? Absolutely. Oh. Look at that stained glass window. That's our uh, logo for the house. The peacock is what we named it. And once again, Mexico. This sleeping loft actually feels a little bit more spacious to me than normal. So I wanted to try to capitalize on the space as much as possible. So I lowered the floor a little bit and then I put the rigid insulation on the outside of the beams so I could have exposed beams on the inside. Even though the beams are here, it still gives you a, a feeling that there's more space. And what are the dimensions of this house actually? It's a 20 foot uh, trailer and it's eight and a half feet wide. But on the back, the staircase does hang out on the outside and in the loft here, we actually go two feet over the, the tongue as well. And can I be cheeky and ask how much this place actually cost to build? I think I was a little over $20,000, but I didn't include my labor in this at all if I was to do it for somebody else. Still a fantastic price for a home that's this charming, this comfortable, this warm, this welcoming, and packed full of really lovely and unique features. Yeah, well that's the nice thing about tiny homes, is that it is small and it should be uniquely yours when you're doing it. So when you're building it, you have to put your flair and you have to determine what's important to you. And that's really all of being in a tiny house is all about, right? What was it that made you fall in love with tiny houses? We used to have a teepee. It was a, like a 20 foot teepee, uh, radius teepee, and we had it all decked out inside. It was, it was beautiful, just loved it. It had a fire pit inside as well, and it was in the Red Rocks in Vegas. And we just loved it. We were up there all the time and capitalizing on it, and friends would stay there, and we had a lot, spent a lot of time up there. But the winds blew it down constantly, and it was a constant battle to mend it and fix it and put it back up again. And I really wanted to, to be in that space. And so tiny house just kind of seemed like the logical next answer, you know? And I wanted to build something as well. I knew I was, uh, you know, enjoy the process of building it. So that's how that started. This tiny house is actually available for rent now on Airbnb, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's uh, doing quite well. Uh, surprisingly, a lot of people enjoy the desert experience <laughs> and coming out to the ranch, so it's getting a lot of uh, traffic and a lot of publicity, so I'm very happy about that. You have done a really fantastic job with this tiny house. I'm really impressed with the quality of the build and so many of the really cool features that you've added, especially that rooftop balcony out there, because that <laughs> is something I've never seen before. Congratulations well, thank on you an amazing project. Thank you so much. The desert is a vast, beautiful and incredibly serene place and somehow this tiny house has found a way of perfectly forming into its landscape. I completely love so many of the wonderful additions to this home. The stained glass work, the Mexican inspired decor has just completely finished this home and turned it into a spectacular desert oasis.